What's up everyone, this is Mitchell here with another Logic tutorial. This tutorial is actually a continuation of a mixing techniques video that I had made uh, previously. That link should be right there. So, um, let's get right into it. In the first video, what we learned was general plug-in um, etiquette. I guess you could say. So um, the kinds of plugins that you're going to want on audio tracks, the kind of plugins you're going to want on software tracks. And well, we went over a lot of that. That was for most of the video. And then we talked about um, oh, come on, how to use this mixer window and how exactly to get a good mix. That's what we went over in the first video. So if you didn't see that, I would highly suggest going back and uh, listening to that because in this video we're going to dive a little bit deeper we're going to be talking about panning and about stereo space and what those means or and what both of those mean and how we can use those to better our mix all right okay so let's start with the first one panning panning is um, very necessary in mixing because if we have all of our tracks right in the center, as in not panned to the right or to the left, they're all going to be bunched up and they're all going to be fighting for uh, space. And we don't want that. So if we pan a few tracks, what that allows us to do is get a couple of those, um, a couple of the, 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 the tracks and send them to the side. That allows more volume to be placed into the middle. And tracks won't be fighting for as much volume in the middle, if that makes any sense. All right, so to explain this a little bit, I have panned some of my drums. And you may ask, why did I choose to pan these drums like this? Uh, my answer is um, this. Imagine sitting at a drum set. What are you going to hear in both of your ears? On a regular drum set, you're going to hear, uh, let's say, a snare and maybe hi-hat, maybe some cymbals on the left, and toms and some cymbals on the right. And then your bass drum is going to be right in the middle. So I took that and I did that exactly here. My kick is going to be right in the middle, snare, and some cymbals are going to be panned to the left, and then some more cymbals and toms are going to be to the right. This is going to help the mix. This is going to help the guitars, the basses, the vocals that all live right in stereo middle to um, have a little bit more breathing room. All right. So uh, we don't necessarily even have to keep it to drums. We, if we have multiple guitar tracks, multiple vocal tracks, we can pan those also. It's also a very nice effect to use. Um, so take advantage of that as much as possible. Uh, and you, you, honestly, you're not going to want to pan it too much. If you pan it too much, it's going to sound it's going to sound cheesy. It's going to sound not... It's, it's just, something's going to sound wrong, and you don't want that. I found negative or positive 15 is a great place to be panning um, your tracks to. All right. So that is panning. Um, what I'm going to talk about next is stereo space. This is a very um, um, almost difficult subject to talk about, even to... Uh, like try to explain it to you guys so I'm going to do my best bear with me here um, and to explain this a little bit more I'm going to use um, auxiliary tracks if you don't know what auxiliary tracks is or, or what aux auxiliary tracks are um, I'll explain them to you here I have four as you can see drums and guitar screaming synth and singing now these are going to be my four auxiliary tracks and now what I can do with these is instead of sending all of our um, software instrument or audio tracks straight to our output we can send them to these auxiliary tracks and then these auxiliary tracks send them to the out the final output so all it is is routing the audio from our normal tracks and putting them into our auxiliary tracks so it's like another stop before they go to the output all right and to do that we can just send them to our bus one, which would be drums and guitar, uh, so, and then you can build them by sending them to your buses. Simple as that. Uh, and then what this allows us to do is put channel equalizer on uh, certain groups of uh, tracks. 
and to, this helps us out a ton and you may ask why does this help us out a ton this is kind of stupid and um, when you are looking at any single track there is a certain stereo space that that track likes it that's where it lives and what we need to do is find out where that stereo space is and then take advantage of that all right so I'm gonna grab my singing track over here and so I'm gonna open up this channel EQ and then I am going to make sure the analyzer is on and I like it on high resolution and then I am going to play this track and I'm gonna see exactly where the um, stereo space is for this certain track. Alright, so I'm going to hit play and I'll show you. And you can see most of it is around 500 to maybe 1500 um, hertz. And so I took advantage of that and put a, uh, a, little, a little hill right here at 1000 hertz. And what that does is just amp up the uh, volume right that one spot All right. and so what this allows me to do is now go to my other three auxiliary tracks and put a dip at a thousand K turns out my screaming also likes to live at a thousand K so I put a I'll just make that a thousand Hertz or a thousand Hertz sorry not a thousand K and so I have these these different um, what am I trying to say? Different stereo spaces. All right, and we always have a bass, which is going to be my drums and guitar. And what this is, what I'm going to do is put a dip at each one of the spots where stereo space lives. Okay, so at a thousand hertz, which is where my singing and screaming are, I'm going to put a dip there. At 500 is where the synth likes to the the stereo space for my synth likes to live, so I'm going to put a dip in all the other. I'm going to put a dip in all the other um, equalizers at 500 hertz. I cannot tell you why I have a dip at every single one at uh, 2000k. That was definitely a mistake. So let me uh, change all those really quick. Oh, what am I doing here? All right, there we are. Okay, so we have all we have our stereo space all lined up for each one, all four of our auxiliary tracks. And what this is going to do is just help our final mix um, sound a little bit more clear. You can pick out different instruments as you're listening to them in at, as a whole. That's the whole point of finding these stereo spaces and taking advantage of them. Okay? And you could even, instead of having um, drums and guitar, you can have drums here as your bass. And then for the guitar, you can find the stereo space for the guitar and then take advantage of it like that. That's another way of adding um, some more depth, some more, you know, stereo space to the final mix. So there you are. Hopefully um, I made that as understandable as possible. It's a very hard topic to try to teach somebody. So I'm going to, at, in the end, I'm going to just play this track over a couple times and I want you to listen for two things. Number one is panning. Um, I panned symbol one and symbol two to the right and left ears. So these two tracks right here at the end, you will be able to clearly hear symbols on both sides um, be a little bit more louder on both sides. All right. And number two, I want you to listen, just pick out any one of these tracks, guitar, bass, singing, uh, the background vocals, um, the synth, any of the drum parts, and I want you to listen for it. And if we did it right, we will be able to pick out every single one of those from the mix. All right? And if we did it wrong, we need to um, go back and find out what's not coming through the mix, find the stereo space, and do it all over again. All right? So let's see if I did it right.
so, I, I mean, to me, I can hear every single one of the elements in this part of the song. So, uh, to me, this would be a perfect, um, perfect mix for me. A and this is only one part of the song. What's going to be difficult is f making these stereo spaces for all of your elements. And if I unhide some of these tracks, I have a ton of these tracks. And if you think about it, I have to find stereo space for each one of these. It's pretty ridiculous. And this will take you some time. But trust me, in the end, you will have a great, great mix. And if you did it all correct, it's all gonna, you're gonna be able to hear all of the different elements in every single part of the song. Your volume finally will be around, as I said, negative 2.5 to say 5 decibels, which will help your audio engineer out when you master it. So there you are, everyone. Hope you enjoyed these two tutorials. Um, comments, feedback are is much appreciated. Uh, and then just rate, subscribe, you know the deal. Peace out, everyone.